Hi, welcome to ME and 221. Today we are going to talk about a systematic strategy for solving frame problems, especially by hand. So if you're doing it by computer, you can do slightly differently. You can be you can be uh, less careful about certain things, especially science and things like that. But when you're doing by computer, I mean, when you're doing by hand, you have to be careful. So let's see this particular example. So I'll tell you some common things. These are guidelines. These are not meant to actually replace uh, logic. So the idea is you have to think about how you are solving these problems. So let's start with this one. So first item, step one, look for two force members. and replace them with axial forces. I'm going to eliminate them. So here is a two force member. Here is a two force member. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it with a force here and a force here. And I'm going to get rid of this. Similarly, I'm going to replace it with a force here and a force there and I'm going to replace this okay step two so let's let's call this for a b find the angles at which these two four to these two force members act So if you look at this, if I draw a line here, you can see that this distance is 1, this distance is 2. So you can calculate this angle, theta equals 26 degrees um, and a little bit more, 26.56, something like that. And this angle is 45 degrees. So those two things are pretty easy. So off we go and we now are ready to calculate all the relevant uh, data. So then step two, start from the place where the force originates <coughs> and draw free body diagrams. Try to solve as you go. Now this is an important step. Notice I did, I did not say solve as you go. I said try to solve as you go. So sometimes what will happen is you will have more, more unknowns than equations. So you cannot really solve at that level. But you may be able to solve for some variables. So there is some high level strategy here. And there's no simple way to figure it out. So let's see if you can apply it to this particular problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw. So this is where the force is originating. So I'm going to draw the free body diagram for this bar. And so what happens is if I draw this free body diagram, so it's going to look like this. This point is G. This point is F. This point is E. And I'm going to put my coordinate system at the location where there is an unknown pin. So this is my x, that's my y. This distance is 1, sorry, 2 meters. This one is 1 meter. And here is the force, w1, which turns out to be, so by the way, this is rigid body number 1. That's rigid body number 2. That's rigid body number 3. OK, so off we go. So I'm going to draw w1, 0, comma, and you can calculate the weight. The weight is uh, 1226.25 Newtons. F acts like this at an angle theta is uh, 26.56. So you can calculate F1 equals some unknown magnitude, which I'm going to call it as F1. The direction is known. The direction is that way. So you can see that y component is positive, x component is negative and the angle is given. So you can calculate all of this. 
So I'm, go I'm going to write it down. This is stuff that you should be able to do. X component is negative 0.4472 <coughs> and Y component is positive 0.8944. How did I get it? From this angle. So Fx, F1. You got to find You got to figure it out. At point E, we don't know anything. I'm just going to draw it in the first quadrant and I'm going to call it E1 equals E1x, E1y. Okay. Now comes the next aspect of the strategy. Do moments first. So if you do moments first, I am going to, so notice that in this particular case, if I take moments around this point, I can calculate F1. So I am going to take moments around point E, which is EG cross W1 plus EF cross F1. This must be equal to 0. I am not going to explain all the cross products to you. Basically what you have to do is uh, xfy minus yfx for each of them <coughs> if you do that you will get this will give you 3 times 1226.25 negative plus 0. Point, uh, sorry plus 2 times 0. 0.8944 f1 equal to 0. So this immediately gives me f1 equals 2056.54 newtons. That's what I meant when I said solve as you go. Then you do the next one, summation of all the forces. The x component will give me Um, E1x minus 0 0.4472 F1 equal to 0 which gives me E1x equals 919.69 Newtons. Summation of all the forces in the y direction will give me, uh, let us start with the right ones, W1 Sorry, minus 1226.65, sorry, 25. That's the y direction force plus 0 0.8944 F1 plus E1y equal to 0. So I will get E1y equals minus. 613.11 right so we are done with the first free body diagram so we took this free body diagram and we went all the way down and we solved everything out of it we have, we have done the summation of forces summation of moments we have to move on to the next free body diagram next free body diagram <coughs> is going to be for the vertical bar because that's the next one that's connected so i'm going to look at the vertical bar here Remember the horizontal bar was like this and F1 was like that, E1 was here and uh, I had W1 here. Okay. Now E2, I am just going to blindly draw like this. I know that E2 will be equal to minus E1. I will use it when I get uh, E2 plus E1 equal to 0. I will use that condition. When I when I actually uh, solve the problem, so at this point, there's the force D, which points this way. That's D two, and then at this point, there's the force C two. Notice that's a pin joint. That's why I have two components for the force. D two will be D two x, comma D two y. And by the way, they're at forty five degrees, so you can you will see that D two x equals D two y. So that makes our life nice and simple. This distance, let's go and see the picture. If you go and see the picture, 
you will see that that distance is 2 meters, 1 meter, here is the pin joint, here is D2, here is E2. So off we go and we are going to write it down. So 2 meters, 1 meter, everything is fine. So we go back and now again do moments first. So again, I'm going to put my coordinate system, coordinate system at pin with unknown forces. That's the smart thing to do. Don't put your coordinate system here, put it here because that's why the forces are unknown. It makes your life easier. So do moments first. Let's do that and if I do moments first, I'll get, let's see what will I get. Look at your picture and I will get um, C E cross E2 plus C D cross D2 equal to 0. So you can do the same x, f, y minus y, f, x and all that and you will get a very simple result which tells me 3 times e to x negative minus uh, 3 times sorry 1 times d to x equal to 0. So I will find that d to x equals uh, 3 times e to x. But e2x was negative e1x. So that is 3 times, sorry, minus 3 times e2x. So that's minus 3 times minus e1x. So if you look at e1x, it was here. There it is. So we got to take that and plug that in there. And you will get d2x equals 3 times 919.69 newtons which turns out to be 2759.07 which turns out to be also equal to d2y so d2 equals square root of d2x square plus d2y square which turns out to be um, 0.707 times uh, 1.414 times 2579.07 2759.07 which is 3901.32 and you can continue but if you look at our problem statement The problem statement find says find the load created in these two things and we found those two things. One of them was F1, one of them was F1, 2056 newtons and the other one was D2, 3901 newtons. You can continue and you can find the other ones if you like but at this stage we are done. You can see how this process works, right? So once you get used to this process, things will get out to be pretty simple.